you're you're telling me you're gonna be able to control a meteor from hitting us and destroying civilization. That's what you think you can do. Okay. I, oh, I know I, we can do it. Okay. So number two, you got the volcano, which is, uh, forget about the 1815 one, which is the Tambora. Yep. The caldera, right? You've seen what happens if the caldera Yellowstone goes yeah. off. That's pretty yeah. crazy as well if that takes off. You think you can prevent that from happening? No. You, you, okay. So that one you can't prevent from. So there are certain things that we have. Right. That whether we like it or not, there is nothing. If it happens, guess what? Make sure you get on your knees and drop your last prayer if you got time. <laughs> and hopefully you chose the right God and we'll see what happens after life. And if you don't, that's the risk you're taking, right? Yeah. We'll see what happened. Well, my take is that it's you can't prevent those things from happening, but you can prepare and you can buffer the impacts of them. That's the thing. If you if you factor that into your thinking, your long term strategic planning, yes, you can you can mitigate the the effects. You can't prevent it. Now, as far as preventing an asteroid, I mean, if you're talking about, you know, a mile wide asteroid, there's nothing we could do about that now. But, you know, the DART mission, we just were able to rendezvous and show that we could actually rendezvous with an asteroid and we could actually move it in space. So the key there is having enough lead time, because these things that have Earth's number on them and there have been thousands of impacts, um, and there will undoubtedly throughout, you know, the next million or few million years, another thousand impacts. Um, what are we looking at? There's DART, Double Asteroid Red Redirection Test. And it showed that we can do it. Now, are we capable of, of, of diverting an asteroid that's on a, on a direct Earth impacting trajectory right now? Probably not. Could we be within five to ten years? Well, yeah, if there was the national will and, and vision and, and, and motivation to do it. And probably, Pat, what it's going to take is another Tunguska event to get shock people into realizing that whether we like it or not, we live on a planet that's part of a larger cosmic ecosystem. And we need to adapt to that. And, and the most devastating catastrophes in Earth history, I believe— and, and there's quite a bit of abundance that would support this conclusion, is that the one that kind of encompasses everything else is cosmic impacts. And if you, if you saw the, the, the number of close encounters over the last 20 years, it's kind of mind-boggling. It is. I mean, two or three times a year, we're, we're having close encounters. And, you know, Tunguska, okay, that was a small, I mean, that's a speck in cosmic terms. Now, could we do something about the problem with Tunguska was it came from the direction of the sun. It came, it, it encountered the earth right after its perihelion passage, meaning it had just passed the sun. And so <clears throat> when the eyewitnesses saw it, it first saw it, it looked like it's coming directly out of the sun. People said it was born out of the sun. Some of the Tungusi tribes people that, that witnessed it said it looked like it was disgorged from the sun, that it was born out of the sun. Um, now, it was likely, in my opinion, part of the Torrid meteor shower. And the reason is the Torrid meteor shower peaks at the end of June and early July, and the summertime Torrids at that period, there we go. Okay, they're coming from the direction of the sun at that time of year. So its position in space mm. and its time in the year were both suitable for it being a member of the Torrid meteor stream. And the Torrid meteor stream is an old meteor stream that probably resulted from a really big comet that came into the inner, was captured into a, into the inner solar system between 25 and 30,000 years ago. There we go. An annual meteor shower associated with the comet Anki. But Anki would have not have been the original comet. Anki was simply a fragment of the original comet. The original comet probably did what Shoemaker-Levy 9 did. It came in and broke up into multiple pieces. And then those broke up into multiple pieces. And it's been going through this hierarchy of disintegration ever since. It is the most likely candidate for the... Uh, the source of the impacts on Earth at the end of the last ice age, the so-called Younger Dryas impacts, which um, very controversial theory, but I think the evidence now is pretty much overwhelmingly supportive of the fact that, yes, Earth got bombarded around 13,000 years ago. Is there anywhere that meteor has never hit Earth? And, and let me explain what I mean by yeah. this. Here's, here's what I mean by this. Is there like a... Uh, 
You know, like in U.S., if you were to pull up uh, uh, numbers and you say, hey, last year we had this many murders, okay, homicides. And I can say, can you give me the top three cities in America for homicides, okay? Uh, okay, number one, let's just say Chicago. Number sure. two, D.C., Baltimore. I'm, I don't know. I'm just, you know, those sure. are some of the numbers that you'll sure. typically hear. Uh, uh, Rob, if you can just type in top three uh, cities in America and homicide, okay? So then I'll say, okay. So where does it not get it? I go, uh, Boise, Idaho. You know, just because hey, why not Boise, Idaho? Well, because Boise, Idaho has, you know, the, uh, the most people that are licensed to carry. Uh, Boise, Idaho is the worst place for you to want to commit crime because it's it's open carry yeah. state. So oh no shit, I didn't know that. Okay, so then it's kind of telling me stuff. So is is there like you know, a meteor will never hit Antarctica? Here's why. A media will never hit it. Do we know stuff like that or not necessarily? Not necessarily, because we okay. know now that there are a couple of large craters under the ice sheet of Antarctica. So the South Pole has been hit <clears throat> probably before the ice cap was there. The South Pole's been hit before? Yes. Yes. Interesting. Uh-huh. And I don't know the age of those craters, but there are a couple of craters, I think, now that have been discovered under the Antarctic ice sheet. Um I think Rob, Rob will, okay, two, 2.5 million years ago, may have exploded over Antarctica, okay. The evidence comes from a chemical analysis. By the way, at this point, uh, uh, Randall, very serious uh, request to you. If you have what you were smoking 50 years ago, Rob may want some of it, if, if you do have any of it. The evidence comes from a chemical analysis of more than 100 tiny pieces of rock entertained Within the White Continent's ice, researchers report in the February yep. first Earth and Planetary Science letters. Yeah, I actually have read that paper that was published in the in the Earth and Planet. And, <clears throat> and this is not what I was talking about. Another one says 250 million years yeah. ago. That's the bottom one that says 250 million. Yeah, that's so probably the one I was what, referring. What, in these uncertain times, if there's anything we need, is we need people to believe the future looks bright. So you, if you've heard about me saying this mission to you. We're on a mission to get a million people to wear this gear, and this is what we're doing. If you buy one of these hats, there's a category of buying one hat, getting the second one free. If you haven't yet worn this gear publicly, go ahead and test it out. Buy some of the gear, wear it in public, and see how many people will stop by and say, you also you also watch a value, Tim? You, you also follow PBD Podcast? I do too. Place your order. Go to vtmerch.com. Click on the link above or below. Place your order and represent the VT and the PBD Podcast gear. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.